Good day grade 11. So welcome to your next lesson in exponents and thirds. In our last lesson we learned about rational exponents and thirds and in this lesson we're just going to practice a few more examples to, just to make sure that you've got to grips with all the basics. So let's start immediately. Our first one says 81 to the power of a half. 81 to the power of a half. Now 81 to the power of a half can be written as the square root of 81 and if you know that you could know that therefore that is just going to be 9 but if we want to treat this as a rational exponent we could say okay fine well we want to get rid of this so what we need to do is we need to factorize and 81 is 9 squared and 9 squared to the power of a half and if we use our product of a our product rule we can take the 2 times by the half so we end up with 9 to the power of 2 over 1 times by 1 over 2 which becomes 9. So either way of looking at it, if you recognize that the half is the square root and you know that the square root of 81 is 9, which you can pop in your calculator anyway, that's fine, but if you don't you can still use your rational exponents to work it out. Let's look at another example. Okay, this is a typical exam example, they love using it. So let's look at this. Now this we are doing our multiplication of brackets. Remember we did things like this where we went a um, plus b, a minus b, and I'm hoping you realize something special about this, but if you don't, let's look at this example. Do you agree this becomes a times a, which is a squared, then we go a times b, sorry I did a times a, now we do a times b, which is going to be minus a b, then we go plus a b, and then we go minus b squared, and this becomes a squared minus b squared. So what I was hoping that you would see is that we've got two terms in the first bracket, and we've got identical terms in the second bracket, but we've got a plus and a minus. This is actually the difference of two squares, which means all we have to do is square the first term, which becomes 3 squared. You bring it down a minus, because it's different to 2 squares, and then we square the second term. And 3 squared is 9 minus, this is the square root of 2 squared, and if you don't know that that becomes a 2, let me prove it to you. This is written as 2 to the half all squared, right? And then that becomes 9 minus, if you multiply across the brackets, a half times 2 becomes 1, so it's 9 minus 2, which is 7. Okay, so that is a difference of two squares and it's a typical exam question so please make sure you know how to do these. Let's look at another example. Ooh, now we've got negatives in the denominator. Let's not panic. Okay, let's start at the basics and let's see how we do. So let's first of all, let's not worry about this right now. Let's first simplify what's in our bracket. So we've got 5 over 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9. So do you agree, because that, that there, that minus means 1 over, so it's 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9. So we actually are saying 5 divided by a bracket of 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9. And remember that this is all still to the power of a half. I haven't done anything with that yet. All to the power of a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a common denominator going over here. So I've got a 5 divided by the common denominator of 9 and 4, I would say is 36. 4 goes into 36 9 times, 9 times 1 is 9, minus 9 goes into 36 4 times, 4 times 1 is 4, and that's all still squared, right? Then what do we have? We've got 5 divided by... 9 minus 4 is 5, so it's 5 over 36, all still, sorry, that's not squared, that is to the power of a half, to the power of a half, and now I'm just going to carry on writing here because I've run out of space. What do you do when you're dividing by a fraction? Yes, that's right, what do we do? We tip and time, so we've got 5 over 1, just to make it clear, times by 36 over 5, all to the power of a half, right and five times 
cross multiplied with 5, they cancel. So what are we left with? We're left with 36 to the power of a half. Now there are two ways again you can go at this point. You can either realize that this means the square root of 36 and therefore the answer is 6. Or we can start thinking about what factors can we do with 36. And we know that this is 6 squared all to the power of a half. So 2 times by a half is 1. So that just gives you the answer of 6. So do you see that that thing there looked really scary, but as soon as we look at using our basic rules and we take it in baby steps, we go, okay, fine, 4 to the negative 1 means 1 over 4, etc., etc., we break it up nice and slowly, you can see that actually this isn't such a scary question. You just need to be very careful you don't make silly mistakes and just take it baby steps and obey your rules. Let's do another example. Okay, so now we've got the fourth root of 16x to the 4 all to the power of 3. Okay, so let's write that out. It becomes 16x to the 4 to the power of 3 all to the power of a quarter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the outside in. And what we're doing here is we're using the product rule. We're multiplying 3 times a quarter. So therefore we've got 16x to the 4 all to the power of 3 over 4. And now again, what do we know? We know that that there, that exponent, applies to everything inside my bracket. So therefore it's 16 to the power of 3 over 4, x to the 4 to the power of 3 over 4. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what we learnt about in prime factors. So I'm going to go, okay fine, 16. What is the smallest prime factor that can go into 16 is 2. 2 goes into 16 8 times. What's the smallest prime factor that goes into 8 is 2. 2 into 8 goes 4 times. What goes into 4 is 2. And it goes twice. And finally, 2 goes 1. So we've got 2 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you didn't already know that 16 is the power of 2 to the 4, now you see how we can work it out. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16, all to the power of 3 over 4. And I'm going to rewrite this again, x to the power of 4, all to the power of 3 over 4. Now remember, if something is to the power of a whole number, you really are implying an over 1. So this can be rewritten as 2 to the 4 over 1 times by 3 over 4. And that can be written as x to the 4 over 1 times 3 over 4. So if I want to write that nice and slowly, I've got 2 to the 4 over 1 times by 3 over 4 times by x the 4 over 1 times by 3 over 4 and again what's nice is that the 4's cancel and we're left with 2 cubed and again yes yeah these 4's cancel so we've got x cubed and I would just finish this off by saying it equals 2 cubed is 8 so that's 8x cubed okay not too scary let's try another one Okay, again, looks really scary, but we're going to take it in baby steps. And remember what I said to you, the first thing I do is I look to see if I can cancel the numbers and keep them out. So one number that can go into both 12 and 8 is 2, but a number that's bigger that can go into both of them is 4. So I'm going to say, okay, fine, 12 divided by 4 is 3 over 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then I'm going to use my quotient rule. So I'm going to go m to the power of 7 over 9 minus minus 11 over 9. Okay, so this becomes 3 over 2 times by m to the 7 over 9 minus times a minus is a plus, so it becomes plus 11 over 9, which is 3 over 2 times by m to the 7 plus 11 is 18 over 9. And 18 over 9 is just 2. Isn't that nice? It becomes 3m squared all over 2. Or you could have left it. Or you could have left it as 3 over 2m squared. Right. Okay. So again, if you see something like this, it looks scary because it's got that to the power of a minus. Remember, just use your rules. Can't see if you can find some common factors factor it out, then look for your common basis, then just use your rules and you'll eventually get to an answer. Oh, okay, baby steps. Now, the reason I included this one, because it's a very nice question, is because of specifically these things here. In this question here, do you agree that the first term 
everything is to the zero and anything to the zero is equal to one plus but in this one only the x is to the power of zero so therefore this is still five times by one okay minus and I really don't like these type of decimals so I'm going to change it into fractions so we've got a half I mean a quarter sorry a quarter to the power of negative a half okay and there's a reason I'm doing that we'll look at it now the reason is because I can't seem to visualize these decimals very well they're actually quite tricky and a lot of these questions they ask you to do without a calculator and you might say oh I'll put in my calculator get the answer and they'll never know they know they know because they like to see the working there's marks allocated to the marking to the working and also on top of that sometimes your answer comes out in like a decimal which is very difficult to do if you're doing it in your head but if you're doing it with fractions you can see what's going on and then this one here we need to break your 8 down into your prime factors again and again just to show you how you would do it okay so the smallest prime factor is 2 2 goes into 8 4 times you then put another 2 2 goes into 4 twice and 2 goes into 2 once, so 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that means 2 cubed, so it'd be plus 2 cubed to the power of 2 over 3, okay, so now we've got 1 plus 5 is 6, okay, minus, this negative means what? It means that I should be flipping this thing over, okay, so that becomes 4 to the power of a half plus Remember I said to you that this implies an over 1. So therefore I can write this as 2 to the power of 3 over 1 times by 2 over 3. Now grade 11s, you really don't need to write this out like this if you know what you're doing. If you understand that it's, it's going to cancel and life is good, that's fine. But if you struggle with this and you want to make sure that you get the right answer, take baby steps, write them out. So then as you practice grade 11s, you'll get faster and faster and you'll get this stuff right. 6 minus, remember 4 is the same thing as 2 squared, 2 squared, all to the power of a half, plus, now these cancel and you're left with 2 squared, so we've got 6 minus, this cancels with that, so you're left with 2, plus 2 squared, which is 4, which is the same as 6 plus 2 which is 8. So the final answer there is 8. So grade 11s, I don't want you to get confused between everything in a bracket to the power of 0 or just one of the variables to the power of 0. Also please, if you see something like that, please change it into fractions because it's much easier to cope with. And then remember your prime factors and then just remember your rules and baby steps. Right, grade 11 to go practice and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.